Hello, you are welcome once again to Tazunomi Online Mathematics. We are still on the course of Trigonometry 1, the introduction to Trigonometry 1, episode 5. This time around, we're going to take a small tutorial or concept of a reference angle because we'll be using more of this uh, approach in solving some questions. Now, when they say a reference angle, we are only referring to an angle made with the x-axis. The positive angle that is made with the x-axis. You know, angles are formed from initial point and the terminal point. So our x-axis is always the initial point. Any other line, so for example, if I have an angle like this, if I'm measuring from down, up, it means this A is my initial line or initial point. And if this is B, so this is the movement. So I will say initial point and terminal point. The same way, if I have my X axis, which is going to be this, any angle from here, this becomes initial point and terminal point. So the angle form, a positive angle form between any terminal point and the X axis is what we are referring to as what? A reference angle. So now we know that the Cartesian plane divides a circle into four. If I have a circle and I divide it this way, I know one, two, three, four. Now we already talked about the measurement of trigonometry is in the anti-clockwise direction, meaning the movement is from here, zero to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, then all the way to 360. Now this is called first quadrant, and this is the second quadrant, third quadrant, and what? Fourth quadrant. Now, in each of the quadrants, we can have a reference angle, meaning we can always get x-axis in each of the quadrants. So if I am in this quadrant, let me redraw this. If I have an angle, theta, here, you can see this is my reference angle, angle from the x-axis. If I am in the second uh, quadrant, if I have angle beta, you see this is a terminal angle, and this is what? The initial angle. So I have x axis, second quadrant. If I have an angle here, I still have an x axis, so I can have this angle. If I'm in the fourth quadrant, I still have x axis. So the angle I will have here is what we call the reference angle. Good. Now, there are sign allocation to the trig ratios. We've already learned about sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. And in each of them, we know that this is going to be so, opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tua, opposite over what? Adjacent. Now, we know in the beginning, what we described is that if I have this, if I draw a line from here to the circumference, we call this one word radius, as in a circle. A line from the center to the circumference is radius. And in the beginning we said if I draw this point down, I'll be having a line parallel to the uh, y axis. So I can label here y. This is already x axis. With this, that is how come we said trigonometry is done on right angles, not other type of angles, triangles. So if I have this, the hypotenuse, which is the radius, is going to be always positive. But the x and y will be negative depending on the quadrant that you have. If I am in this quadrant, both x and y, y will be positive, x will be positive. So any value, you see, this is going to be opposite. So if I have an angle here, this angle is opposite to y, positive over r, positive. So sine will be positive. If I take cos, which is going to be adjacent over what? Hypotenuse. They are all positive. So I have positive value. Tan is going to be 2, opposite over adjacent, positive, positive. 
So the value of tan sine cos in the first quadrant is always positive. That is what I said. All acute angles are positive angles for the trig ratios. All right. Now, what if I am in the second quadrant? You know, if I have my right angle triangle, where here will be y, here will be x, you can see that this axis is going to be positive. But this axis will be negative for x. So it means if I have sine, which is going to be opposite, y over r, you can see that both are positive. The r is always positive. So your sine theta is going to be opposite, which will be y over what? r. Both positive. If I take cos, cos theta is going to be k, which is what? Adjacent over what? Our hypotenuse. And don't forget the adjacent here is what? Negative. Here is negative axis. So it means the cos will be negative. Then if you take tan theta, it's going to be two opposite over adjacent. Y over negative x. X is negative. So the value of tan in the second quadrant will be negative. Cos will be negative. Sine will be positive. If you move here, you can see that they are all going to be negative, negative. Negative x, negative y. Try that and see. You will see that your sine will also be negative. Your cos will be negative. It is only tan that will be positive. Then in the fourth quadrant, Using the same approach, you will see that your sine will be negative, your cos will be positive, and the tan will be what? Negative. So we have each of the quadrant which each of the uh, three ratios are positive. All right. It means all is positive here. So if I have, so it means all the ratios are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, it is only sine that is positive. In the third quadrant, we have only what? Cos. Then in the last, no? We have this one to be tan, as we said here. Then this is going to be cos. So all will be here. Sine, tan, cos. They are all going to be positive at each of the quadrants. That is why there is an acronym to have all silly tank cast if you can remember that all silly tank cast or better still you will use c a s t you will get cast if you use cast it means you are beginning from here c a s t cast you can use that all right since that is out of the way let's concentrate on the reference angle of each of them so it means that if i am asked to for example one so find if i'm asked to find the value of sine 120 you know 120 is not part of the special triangles that we did the last time in the first second episode we use our hand to find 0 30 45, 60, 90. 120 is not part. So for me to know the exact value of 120, I have to draw my Cartesian plane, knowing very well that this is going to be 90. From here to here, 90. From here to here, 180. And this is less than 180, meaning it's going to be some here. All the way from here will give me 120. But we are saying that to find the angle, we are using reference angle. So in the reference angle, the angle from here is the one with the x-axis. So what should I add to 120 to get a full 180? I believe that is what? 60 degrees. So the reference angle, this is going to be sine 60. 120 is the same as sine 60. And we know sine 60 is what? Root 3 over 2. Don't forget, 0. 30, 45, 60. So sine. So we have root 3 over 2 as a value. So we see that we can easily get this 120 as in this. It is positive because 
sine is positive in the second quadrant. Clear? Good. Now, if I have another question, whether I'm asked to find cos 240 degrees. Cos 240 degrees, we know cos. We can also draw our Cartesian plane. Moving all the way, 90, all the way, 180, going across 278, meaning 240 will be somewhere here. Don't forget, we are moving all the way to get our 240. What angle is made with our x axis? It's from here to here. Don't forget, if you reach here, you're having 180. So we added some amount of degrees. To 180 to get 240. I believe that to be 60. We added 60 to this to get 240. So it means this reference angle here will be 60 degrees. So this is going to be, this is all of them being positive, sine being positive, cos will be negative here. So I have negative cos 60. Negative cos 60. So we are going to have negative cos 60 will be half. No, let's see whether we can get half. 0, 30, 45, 60. Cos, you take the finger above. So we have 1 over 2. Negative 1 over 2. So 240 as cos will be a value of negative half. Now, what if somebody wants to find time 240 degrees? Than 240 degrees, meaning we are having the same diagram. So we are having the same 60, but we are having 60 that will give us tan is positive in this quadrant. So positive tan 60. And let's say tan 60 will be here. We are picking root 3 over root 1, and that will give us only root 3. So you can find any angle given to you for cos sine tan if you know the reference angle you know the the quadrant in which each of the values will be all right i believe you have followed how to find this angle so you can try cos 135 degrees you can also try sine 45 I know you know 45 will be in the first quadrant. What answer you get? You can find that. You can even equally find uh, cos 120 or tan 120 and see the value. The values will be the same. If you have 150, the only difference will be the negative and the positive sign. So I believe if this concept is correct, it will be a prerequisite knowledge for us to solve questions in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Share this video with yourself and with people that may need it. Thank you. This is Tazunomi Online Mathematics. Bye-bye.